Hey guys, Wolf Corn here. Join us on this multi-part series about flying across the country and back in my 1992 Grumman Tiger. Wolfacorn here with Carla. So today we're starting a uh, road trip of sorts. Uh, we're, we're making our way to Hot Springs, Arkansas from Los Angeles, California. It's gonna be a two day trip for us. Uh, right now we're going to Sedona, Arizona. We're gonna stop there, probably get a little gas. After that, we're either gonna go to Santa Fe, New Mexico for the night or possibly uh, Amarillo, Texas if the weather is good, but uh, there have been some thunderstorms and uh, a lot of rain in, uh, in the area, so uh, we might, we probably won't go that far. And also, why would we want to go to Amarillo when we can go to Santa Fe, New Mexico? Amar Amarillo. Amarillo. We have a special guest traveling with us today. This is uh, Venus, our Venus flytrap. Um, we're not like weird people that like travel with our plants. Normally, but but we are but we are <laughs> only because this needs water what every two or three days every two days and every day. and we didn't have anyone to water our plants so it would die if we didn't bring it so yeah it might die anyway but uh, we'll see no she won Venus is coming along to Hot Springs Arkansas with us. Traffic, White Blue Drum, and short final 03, Sedona. Hey guys, on the ground here in Sedona. Right now, uh, we're about to head out to Santa Fe, but I've got my eye on some thunderstorms that are building up uh, in, in route, which is quite typical for uh, summertime here. Pretty much happens every day. You just kind of end up having to kind of pick your way through the thunderstorms. I'm just waiting to see if uh, the thunderstorm's going to uh, end up blocking our way into Santa Fe. So I'm just gonna hang out here a little bit longer and uh, see what happens. Sedona Airport. Automated weather observation. One eight zero five Zulu weather. Wind one two zero at eight visibility one zero. Clear below one two thousand temperature three. Hey guys, so we're leaving Sedona now, headed to <laughs> Santa Fe, New Mexico. Hopefully, as long as the thunderstorms don't get in our way. And Venus is surviving. Surviving. We are finally up to 11,500. Uh, it took about 30 minutes from Sedona to get up this high because uh, the density altitude is pretty high today, but we're making our way towards Santa Fe. Woo! It's nice and clear right now, but there are some thunderstorms in our path that we will have to uh, contend with. So uh, Venus here is doing okay. Yeah, she's, she's still alive. It's a she? So in aviation, you have to remain flexible, and uh, uh, that's what we're doing right now. We are diverting from uh, Santa Fe. That we're going to Gallup, New Mexico, which is about here, five, 10 minutes up the road. 
Yeah, thunderstorms were just not looking good and it was getting a little bumpy, so uh, we're just going to put it down and uh, see what happens from there. So we're here in uh, Gallup, New Mexico, kind of an unexpected uh, place I didn't expect to be in today. And so we are going to sit here for about an hour and see if the thunderstorms die down at all. And uh, if so, maybe we're one hour away from Santa Fe. Um, so we might do that. Or if it's still looking bad, we'll just uh, stay here in a hotel tonight and uh, continue the journey tomorrow. <laughs> One of the fantastic parts of general aviation is that it can take you to places you never expected to be, like Gallup, New Mexico. The chili, the green, the pepper. And to experience moments that you will forever remember. So we are on the ground here in Tucumcari, New Mexico, just to fuel up and uh, just take a little break. It was a little bumpy for the last hour because we had to dip under the uh, cloud layer and uh, I don't know, it just made it a little uncomfortable. So sitting in a nice air conditioned uh, building for about an hour to, to re-energize is a good thing. So Tucumcari, New Mexico, I, I was always curious about the name Tucumcari and I actually asked uh, Paul, the, the manager here, uh, where the name came from and he, and he told me an interesting story I don't know if it's true or not but the legend has it that there used to be a uh, Native American squaw named Carrie and a uh, warrior named named Tukum and uh, they fell in love and it was of course forbidden love the parent the families wouldn't let it so what did they do of course they went on top of the uh, local mountain and jumped off and killed themselves together like a typical love story i feel like i've heard that story before in many a uh, shakespeare shakespearean plays or uh tales throughout time but uh whether it's true i don't know but i like it took care of traffic blue light grumman lined up on runway 21 will be departing uh eastbound to carry Upon leaving Tucumcari, the game plan was to file IFR and fly above the building cloud layer that was the source of our bumpy flight on the previous leg. November 244 Echo Romeo, radar contact east of the Tucumcari report 12 miles clear to the Alpha Delta Hotel Airport, as well, comma, maintain 9000. Alright, so we're going to pop through the clouds. I think we'll be like right on, literally like right on top of the clouds for most of the way, as long as the clouds stay that height. Well, the cloud layer was higher than I anticipated, and as fun as it can be to fly through the clouds, it can also be bumpy, so I requested a higher altitude to try and get above them. 444 Echo Romeo, climb maintain 1-1000. Climb maintain 1-1000 for now, thank you. Well, we tried to uh, get above the clouds, but 11,000 wasn't cutting it, so uh, we're just going to go to 7 and fly right under them. We eventually made our way down to 5,000 feet, which was the lowest altitude we could remain IFR. The bumps ended up not being too bad as we surfed the bottom of the cloud layer until we neared our next fuel stop in Oklahoma.
Okay, so after landing in Ada, we ran into an interesting little problem. Uh, the FBO was closed, it closed like 15 minutes before we arrived. And they have a self-serve fuel pump, but it's locked up and closed and apparently they don't even use it. And apparently I've learned that in Oklahoma, self-serve fuel is not easy to come by. So that got, took up some time, but then we went and had dinner at a local Ada restaurant. And what do we have to eat? Uh, fried chicken. <laughs> no, chicken fried steak. Well, it's kind of the chicken, same, right? Chicken fried steak, I mean. It was fried and it was chicken. With a bunch of gravy slathered all, all over it. Yeah. And so now we are on the last leg to Hot Springs. We've got 54 minutes to go. We'll be landing a little bit after sunset. Should be a nice scenic approach. And it's very smooth, don't yeah, you think? Yeah, I'm feeling better. Carla is a happy camper. I'm a happy camper because it's definitely a smooth flight. Yeah. So in Arkansas, the Arkansas Razorbacks are very, very popular in the state. And uh, a couple years ago, Carla came to uh, see an Arkansas Razorback football game with me <laughs> and my parents. And they taught her how to call the hogs. And so we're going to call the That's hogs. That's true. Because, oh, because we're going to Arkansas. Like, we need to oh. call the hogs. So are you ready? One, two, three. One, two. Ooh, big, big sweet, sweet Razorback. Razorback. No, it's only one hand, not, not both. <laughs> but you're doing like no, because I was following you, but it's, it's only one. <laughs> Our last leg at the hot springs was as smooth and relaxing as it gets. After two days of flying, we were looking forward to spending the Fourth of July at the lake with family. Hot springs traffic, uh, drumming on short final runway five, hot springs. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Part two will pick up where this adventure left off. I hope to see you there.